This episode is proudly sponsored by Indigenous Business Australia, who serves, partners and invests with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who want to own their own future. Black Magic Woman podcast acknowledges the traditional owners of the land we have recorded this episode on. We also acknowledge traditional owners of the land where you, the listener or viewer, are tuning in from. We would like to pay our respects to our elders past and present and acknowledge that this always was Aboriginal land and always will be Aboriginal land. Welcome to the Black Magic Woman podcast with Mandanara Bales. Welcome to another special episode of the Black Magic Woman and Indigenous Business Australia Partnership Series, also known as the IBA Partnership Series. My guest today is Fiona Clark, and I am going to hand over to Fiona to introduce herself and tell us a little bit about who your mob is and where you grew up. Uh, thanks for having me here today. M- my name is uh, Fiona Clark. I come from Wanabu, from the um, Gunditjmara country, Kurayurong area. Um, I have families up there. I also um, um, have moved on to Melbourne. I'm a Melbourne-based artist now. And my, I have siblings and families in Wanabu. So for all our listeners and viewers that don't know where Warrnambool is, describe your country to us. So Melbourne, was it 20-minute drive from Melbourne? Um, for, from Melbourne, it would be about um, four hours towards the Portland direction. Wow. Yeah. It's about four hours from here and it's by the coast? Yes, coastline. Are you saltwater people or freshwater people? Uh, a lot of beaches, you know, big beach down there and there's the river down there in my country. Um, I like the river, I think, better. Mm. Yeah. And which way? you got children? Are you a single mum or you got a big tribe um, of kids? Or I you're have just an one auntie? daughter. <laughs> one daughter. One daughter and, and a husband. Okay. Well, big shout out to your daughter if she's listening or watching to come here um, and meet us here in the city, I just want to say thank you for making the trip and also for taking time out to, to share your story. I've been Googling you. I've been looking at your website. There's a few websites. I was looking at the beautiful clothing, the shoes, the dresses, even the duffel bags. I can't wait to show my kids. So I'm going to ask in terms of your artwork because your art, I believe, is in the cement of five train stations here in Melbourne. How did that happen? Um, I've heard it through a friend and um, I looked it up and uh, we applied for it. I worked with my husband, Ken McKean, on the five stations. and um, But we... You know, probably didn't expect to get it, but it, we almost designed it with um, upgrades, um, business with the Ballarat Lines upgrades wow. people. And um, we could have got, you know, three stations, but um, we were lucky to get to five. So you're part of Victorian history now? Yes. Your artwork. Yeah. And what inspired you? To become an artist, was you always, you know, from a young um, age, drawing or painting or was it later in life? Uh, later in life, I think it was back in 1989, um, there was a couple of deaths in the family and there was one with my niece and um, about five, six months later, my brother passed away. I didn't know what to do with my life, but I saw um, my husband painting um, my siblings were painting and I thought, well, uh, I think I might take up art just to get myself somewhere to relax, um, to relax myself because I, I've been through um, uh, a, a grand mal epilepsy mm-hmm. and that wasn't helping me. Um, so I thought um, 
you know, doing art or something for my stuff would, would help me. Wow. Yeah. And look, now you've got the art, not just part of Victorian history in the train stations, but your artwork featured on a post stamp. Mm. Was it something to do with your famous family? Yes, that's um, another achievement. Connection, <laughs> yeah, that's to do with the um, uh, couple of them who made a team up, like with First Eleven, um, uh, to do with the um, uh, cricket walkabout. The first Aboriginal cricket team, yes, to go to England, yes, and play cricket. Yes. In 1868, that's right. your great-great-grandfather yes. and his brother yes. were in that team. Yes. They made history. They did. The first Aboriginal people to represent our country yes. before we were even citizens yes. in our own country. Yes. And you done the artwork that they used to commemorate the 150-year anniversary. Yes. That was back in um, 2016. I, I submitted it in and I um, I just put it in and just left it and I got a call eventually about um, um, that it was my work. That your work was had won. What, what was holding you back from submitting it? Like, was there some <laughs> self-doubt um, or you were too busy? Too busy <laughs> at the time, like I am now. Yes. So, um, yeah, too busy and um, um, didn't know what to do at the, t at the time because we were almost um, had a, a Tara festival up and running, uh, which we did a year before that, and, um, and my sister, uh, Patricia Clark is the founder of that festival, Tower. Yeah. Um, alongside um, co-founder Shane Howard, Goanna Fella. Yes. So the um, Goanna Band. Yeah. Is it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you put it in. You got the call. So we're choosing your artwork. The fact that you're a direct descendant of two of the cricket players mm -hmm. is amazing. And the other thing I was looking at is that they use the artwork for their uniform. Yes. And on the cricket ball itself, yes. your artwork was there. Yes. And then That's it right. became part of a post stamp. Yes. So you can collect those stamps. And I was having a look at the the men on that stamp and I got goosebumps. I got goosebumps mm -hmm. here again. Mm -hmm. And you know what, what I was thinking? I was thinking about the life that they would have come back to. So here they are going across the other side of the world mm -hmm. and they won 14 games, mm -hmm. they lost 14 games and they drew mm -hmm. something. So they played over 45 games. You know, when, when you hear about, um, was it Sir Donald, Sir Gilbert? Eddie Gilbert. Eddie Gilbert bowled. If, um, the Donald Bradman for a duck. A duck. A open batsman. <laughs> yes. So. <laughs> so you hear about these stories. Yes. And just the other day I was with Queensland Cricket mm -hmm. a couple of days ago and I was doing a presentation oh, yeah. around the sponsors of Queensland Cricket, like Toyota and um, the Great Southern Bank. All their sponsors came to a breakfast and I was one of their guest speakers. And when I opened up the brochure of Queensland Cricket to look at their club and how many women are now playing, the first picture is they're acknowledging Eddie Gilbert. Mm. And I was I actually showed my husband that this morning and now here I am sitting here talking to a descendant of two of the lads that got to play in that um, tournament. Mm. Today you've got a few things going on. I'm sure you've got a lot of things going on. So the artwork has now taken off and you're doing the designs with fashion. Is that something that you're, you're going to keep on going with the fashion label and shoes and clothes and the gym wear? 
Yes, I remember back in 2015 that I said to a close friend in the gym, I said that um, I think I want to go into sportswear. There's a big market for it. Yeah, and just to get that moving along and see what I can do. Mm. And how did you find out about Indigenous Business Australia? Um. I um, heard about them some time ago. Yeah, it was quite some time ago. Yeah? Yeah. But there wasn't much going on for you then? No, it wasn't at the time. And when no. things started to pick up, you realised you needed some business Something. support? Yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> and how did they support you? Um, they um, supported with um, a web. Yeah, the first thing. Oh, you need a presence. So a website yes. was the first yes. thing? Yeah, that was the first thing. Yes, because yes. without a website, mm. it's impossible for people to find you because they don't use the yellow pages anymore. No. We, we used to just pick up the yellow pages oh, no. or the white pages. And now for anyone that's a little bit younger, <laughs> the yellow pages and the white pages were about that thick from A to Z and you used to go there, find the business, and then you'd ring them up. Now we've got Google. <laughs> and yeah, Google. All the time. <laughs> yes. And Google leads us to a shop front on the internet. So you got a, a website. What other support were they able to offer you? Was it business advice? Yeah, um, there were, um, I think, about one or two uh, workshops they um, uh, had just um, advising. Um, a few things of what you do about the marketing, producing and what have you. And is it something now in terms of, do you see yourself as a business owner, a businesswoman? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> and being in business, what has it been able to do for you? Like as, as your daughter now started to look at what you're doing, have you got siblings or you know, nieces and nephews looking at you going, oh, look, if Auntie Fiona can run a business, mm -hmm. then we can do it too. Have you found that you've been able to inspire some of your mob? Well, I hope so because um, I've got a, quite a few um, nieces and nephews and they have kids as well and things like that. So um, um, littlies, so they, um, you know, I'm hoping to inspire them. And has it been able, I always talk about, you know, with black fellas, mm. money's not our motive. Mm. A lot of us kind of end up being in business, but it wasn't because we wanted to make money. Mm. It's usually because, well, I, I went into business because I wanted to be my own boss. <laughs> if I made money, that was going to be a bonus, but I was sick of working for non-Indigenous people mm. and having white fellas as my boss and working in organisations where a lot of the time you're the only black fella in there. Mm. So I was dreaming one day I'm going to be my own boss mm. and I'm going to employ black fellas and I made that, you know, come true. But it was never, I never wrote it down or I never went to university. I never thought I'd end up in business. But what it's been able to do for me is I've been able to employ a lot of my family. But they say sometimes, hey, you shouldn't mix your business with your family. Well, I've done the opposite. I make sure our family is number one and if there's no one in the family that can do the job, then I look in the community. Mm. But to be able to give our mob an opportunity, mm. that's that's what drives me in wanting to be in business. What drives you? I, I feel it's um, just getting it out there in the market mm -hmm. and um, trying to get your, your business up and running. Yeah. And... Um, and trying to have um, what you might want in it, I guess. <laughs> so try, trying to get your stories out there. Yeah. Because every piece of art that you're creating, there's a story attached to it. Yes. And having the wider community appreciate the history, yes. not That's just it. all the art but the history of the country, the history of those stories? Well, it needs to be told out there somehow. It's not only just on my, my paintings or anything like that. I, I've decided to use it into um, uh, something that can be worn 
um, out there that could tell a story out there mm. because there's some um, leggings called My Country or whatever it might be and um, um, and could be on runners as well. It could be on mats and whatever it might be on the web there. But mm-hmm. um, there, there's a lot talking about like My Country, um, uh, Gundi Tamar. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, that's the only way you can get the story out there, apart from paintings that um, might be in exhibitions or you might get a piece of corner off the painting to recycle it into the um, piece of garments you might want. Yeah. yeah. Well, in terms of talking about exhibitions, I heard you had an exhibition. I've had a few exhibitions in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, Have you got anything planned for the future that you might want to share? Are you working on a current piece at the moment? Are you got a project happening? Well, I've got a few of them <laughs> happening at the moment <laughs> right now. I've yeah. just got to start them up. And yes. They sort of like um, pipeline um, ones at the moment, but I've mm. got to get the uh, date started on the on uh, you know them at so the you moment. Got, you got a few things coming up. Yes. So how can people? get in touch with you so it's the best place because I was asking you before I said are you on social media and you said yeah yes I Is, am. you're on LinkedIn yes now I keep telling a lot of my mob you've got to get on LinkedIn if you're serious mm-hmm. about being in business and you need to get on LinkedIn you're on Instagram yes under Fiona Margaret Clark yes because I tagged you yes and you're on Facebook as well yes yes and you're on, you're not really on Twitter. Well, Twitter's I not am on Twitter, but I, yeah, I we, haven't been there much at all. Can uh, you can you see, it, I'm blown away that we got one of our older aunties on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and not just one website. You've got a couple of websites. Yes. So one website's for your art. Yes, that's right. And that's just fionaclark.com.au. Yes. yes. And then your other website is where you showcase the fashion. Yes. It's like a retail. Yes. So I saw that you use Shopify. Yes, that's, that's the right. That's the, which, which is a shopping cart. See, I'm, yes. I'm new at all this stuff too. <laughs> <laughs> but we need to keep up. Need to keep them up somehow. Yes. Yeah. So you got a Shopify kind yes. of account where you can sell. Yes, that's right. Where you can order. Um, maybe you can order uh, children books that I've written and illustrated. So you've got a children's um, book. Yeah. Can you tell us about that? Uh, the latest one is about um, uh, the rainbow serpent is coming. Um, my niece. Um, has a little girl at the time, which, but now she's a secondary school student. Um, uh, mentioned something about the rainbow serpent is coming. So that book really um, represents my great niece, really, and um, to um, it's a really to do with um, a clean up and into um, environment, really. Yeah. Yeah. Or teaching people about the land. Yeah, yeah. Looking after the land. Yeah, definitely. Looking after the land and um, the river. Yeah. Yeah. What, you got another book as well I saw. Uh, Minkil Chases the Rainbow. Okay. Minkil means um, star. Okay. From the Aboriginal Dreamtime. Yeah. Which is from my um, my country. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, Mara country, Karayurong. So that book, they're both children's books? Yes. And what made you want to write a book? Uh, Look at all these different talents. Writing, art, uh, illustrating, uh, exhibitions. I felt I wanted to um, do some books for some reason, but um, I was asked by um, a friend, would I write a book? And um, she, she helped publish it. So... Um, at the time when she got that all together with me. The first book was sort of hard, but um, the second book was um, 
pretty straightforward where I almost written it by myself and and did the paintings as well and to help the staver looked it. Yeah. And um gave um, you some feedback. Yes, yeah, she did. She did with the second book. Yeah. yeah. Claire Gleason and um and that's what happened. I, I got that book out just only twelve months ago. That, like, congratulations. Yeah, That's a big you. achievement because we can all have ideas and we can sit around and yarn about it around the kitchen table. But a lot of our mob don't know what the next step is. Who do I talk to? Where do I go? Mm. And if that's you listening to this podcast or watching this Deadly Yarn on our YouTube channel, if you're sitting there and you're thinking about a business idea, Indigenous Business Australia have a whole range of products and services for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. So pick up the phone, give them a call and have a yarn. You just don't know what's available until you you know, you know get online or you can get on the website and have a look. Um, I know iba.gov.au is their website, but we'll make sure that we put these details in our show notes. Well, tell me about your beautiful husband, Ken. Have you? I heard you've done a collaboration with him. Yes, we we have. Um, I've worked with um, my husband, Ken McKean, um, on the uh, five stations. Yeah. Um, Ballarat Lines Upgrade. Um, uh, we've worked on quite a lot of um, projects in the past. Uh, we we painted a um, forty metre wall, um, a big uh, mural. Yes. Yeah. Um, so he's an artist as well. Yes. Wow. And what you get along really good, or what you have a few arguments. Uh, <laughs> some of that. <laughs> <laughs> we do get along. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got to get along with your partner if you're going to go to work with them. <laughs> But in terms of now my husband's working in the business that I run, I've got a training business called Black Card mm. and we go into organisations and we help organisations understand our mob so that we can, you know, get more black fellas in the workplace yes. and keep them in the workplace mm. so they're not leaving for whatever reason it is. So having your husband with you, is so he's an artist. Yes. What else does Ken do? Uh, is he a jack of all trades as well? Does he help you with the applications? <laughs> yes. He, he helps out with, um, like, with phone calls and, and what have you and emails and that when I can get on to the, another lot. So he's like your secretary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, um, we, all need, we all need a Ken. So, Ken, if you're listening, <laughs> how do we get you to pick up our phone calls and answer our emails? Yeah. Because we do. We all need, especially when we're busy people mm-hmm. and – You're in demand. You've got a lot of these projects that you're working on. You need someone to keep the back, kind of the back end going. So the phone calls and the emails, he helps you stay on top of it all. Oh, yeah, and he comes out and paints with me. And he comes with you. Works with me. Wow. Which we will be in the next few weeks. Too deadly. Well, I can't wait to see your next project. Do you put stuff on Facebook and stuff when you're working on stuff to kind of let people know? I do. Too deadly. So if you could give any of our mob, whether they're young people or older people, any advice, what would it be? Whether it's about following their dreams or whether it's about, you know, ringing IBA to talk to someone, getting into business or backing themselves, what would your advice be? Um, I think. Well, my advice would be um, just go and do what you, you know, you, you want to do, you know, like in the art or or whatever it might be, sport, personal training, whatever it might take, just, just get your business up and keep it running. Be strong about it. Mm. That's very important. Of course. And in terms of wrapping up our yarn, What's your biggest achievement? Because you've you've achieved a lot with your work. What would you say, if it's not your biggest achievement, what's your highlight of your career so far? What's been your highlight? I, I'd say um, it, it would have to be um, 
the walkabout wicket. So the walkabout wickets is the artwork yes. for the 150th anniversary. Yes. 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 yes, yes, because it also hit out onto the T20 World Cup as well. So, um, yeah, I feel the old fellas are always there for me. Mm -hmm. I'm always there for them. And um, um, you can feel them all the time. So, you know, that's, that's the biggest support you can get. Yeah, I was reading that you said that your art connects you to your ancestors. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's all to do with um, the past, present and future. Mm -hmm. And how important is it that we remind people, especially in this country, now known as Australia, that every day we're walking in the footsteps of our ancestors. So that we walk amongst them every single day. Yes, we do. And you can feel them. Yes, we do. When people, I always, when we're yarning, especially on the podcast, and we get goosebumps, to me that's the old people that we're feeling their presence. They're letting us know that they're here. Yes. It's such an ancient country. It is. And it's an absolute gift to be able to paint the stories of your country. So I want to say thank you so much for coming on the podcast and sharing your amazing story and your achievements and your business with my listeners and viewers as part of this podcast. But also, you know, if it wasn't for Indigenous Business Australia, I would never have known about you. So I feel, I feel really privileged that I've been able to sit on this chair in your presence and have this yarn with you. And I, I wish that more of our people, you know, if there's opportunities that present themselves, take those opportunities with two hands because our future generations and young people are looking up to us and we need to lead the way and show them that we're deadly yes. and that we're strong, yes. you know, and that we can achieve what white fellas can achieve. We can do what they can do and don't let anything hold us back. That's right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank and thanks you. so much for coming by. And big shout out to your deadly husband, Ken. Keep <laughs> up the good work. You can't hold a good woman down. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you go. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> If you'd like any more info on today's guest, please visit our show notes in the episode description. A big shout out to all you Deadly Mob and allies who continue to listen, watch and support our podcast. Your feedback means the world. You can rate and review the podcast on Apple and Spotify or even head to our socials and YouTube channel and drop us a line. We'd love to hear from you. The Black Magic Woman podcast is produced by Clint Curtis. If you'd like to know more about IBA and how they can help you to own your own home, start or grow a business or invest in your future, visit iba.gov.au or free call 1-800-107-107.